Okay. Buckle up, everybody, because we are diving into AI translation today. You sent over a ton of info on this new context sensitivity technology from Bureau Work. And honestly, I had no idea how much research was already out there. It's like AI translators are suddenly everywhere. It's a field that's moving ridiculously fast. Really? And Bureau Works is definitely shaking things up. They're claiming to have cracked the code on a problem that's been plaguing machine translation for decades. And that problem is? Yeah. I mean, I've definitely seen some hilariously bad machine translations in my day. Of course. But I didn't realize it was such a big deal. Oh, it's huge. Think about how many times have you read something that was clearly machine translated and thought, mm -hmm. what in the world is this even trying to say? More times than I can count. Right. And it's not just about those awkward moments for casual users. Professional translators have been grappling with this for ages. Wow. I can see how that would get old fast. So what exactly makes these traditional machine translations so clunky? The problem is most of these systems are basically just spitting out words without any real understanding of the context. They're like those friends who blurt out the first thing that pops into their heads without reading the room. Ouch, I know those friends. So how does Bureau Works claim to have solved this with their context sensitivity approach? What makes it so different? Well, it's like they've given the AI a crash course in reading the room. Instead of just looking at individual words, yeah. they've trained their AI to analyze everything. The whole document, glossaries, even the translator's personal style. Wait, hold on. The AI is looking at the translator's style. Yeah. That's kind of creepy, yet also super cool. Yeah, it is pretty impressive. It's like the AI is acting as a super-powered research assistant, uh -huh. digging through all of a translator's past work and preferences to suggest translations that fit seamlessly with their existing knowledge base. Instead of replacing the translator, it's like giving them a super-powered sidekick. Okay, now that is really interesting. Yeah. So it's not just spitting out a random word-for-word -word translation anymore. It's actually well, trying to understand the nuances. Exactly. And they call this MTPE Reborn. MTPE Reborn. Yeah. Okay. Think about the old way a translator gets a file that's already been machine translated right. and has to slog through it, fixing errors and inconsistencies. Basically, a very expensive game of spot the difference. Sounds tedious. Incredibly. But with this new approach, the AI is doing a lot of that heavy lifting. It's checking for things like terminology, making sure the style is consistent. Okay. And even flagging potential errors before the translator even sees them. So instead of being an error sniffer, the sure. translator can actually focus on, you know, actually translating. That mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. But how does it actually work? Is this some kind of super complicated algorithm? Well, it does involve some pretty advanced technology. Nope. They're using a combination of something called retrieval augmented generation search and large language models, or LLMs for short. Okay, you're gonna have to break that down for me a bit. Sure. Those sound like terms I should know, but honestly, I'm drawing a blank. Imagine the AI having access to a massive, super detailed library of language with everything from technical terms to colloquialisms, right. all organized and searchable. That's essentially what's happening. When it encounters a word or phrase, it can instantly cross-reference it with this library to find the most accurate and natural sounding translation, taking into account the specific context of the document. That's seriously cool. It's like giving the AI a whole education in language before it even starts translating. And they didn't stop there. Really? They even built in something they call translation smells. Translation smells. Okay, now I'm really curious. I know it's a weird name, right? But it's actually a brilliant concept. Basically, the AI is trained to sniff out potential issues in the translation. Things like awkward phrasing, grammatical errors, even subtle things like gender bias and language. Wow, it's like having a super-powered editor built right into the translation software? Basically, yeah. That's incredible. But does this mean human translators are out of a job? Not at all. Okay. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Okay. Think of it as a collaboration, not a replacement. The AI takes care of the tedious, repetitive tasks, freeing up human translators to focus on the really nuanced, creative aspects of language things that AI just isn't capable of replicating. Yeah. That's reassuring. So instead of putting translators out of work, it's actually elevating the entire profession. Exactly. It's all about leveraging the strengths of both humans and AI to produce translations that are accurate, stylish, and culturally relevant. That makes sense. It's a win-win for everyone involved. This is all very impressive, but is there any proof that it actually works. I mean, do these claims hold up in the real world? That's the million dollar question, right? Yeah. And the answer is a resounding yes. Bureau Works actually conducted a pretty extensive study 
to put their money where their mouth is. They analyzed millions of translated segments across 17 different language pairs and compared the results of their context-sensitive approach to traditional machine translation methods. Okay, I'm on the edge of my seat here. All right. What did they find? The results were pretty astounding. Their context-sensitive approach was a whopping 22.08% more effective on average than traditional methods. Wow, 22.08%. That's not just a small improvement, that's a game changer. It really is. And when you think about industries like medicine, law, or finance, right. where even a small error in translation could have huge consequences, that kind of accuracy is absolutely crucial. Okay, I'm sold. Yeah. This context sensitivity thing is the real deal. It's pretty amazing. But I'm curious, they looked at 17 different language pairs. Yes. Which ones were included in the study? They tested a whole range, with English always as the source language. They looked at Portuguese from Brazil, Italian, Spanish, mm -hmm. and I mean both European Spanish and Latin American Spanish. Wow. They got really specific. They really did. Plus, French from both France and Canada, German, Japanese, Dutch, simplified Chinese, Danish, Russian, Korean, Vietnamese, Thai, and Turkish. Wow, they weren't messing around. No, they were not. They really wanted to put this technology through its paces. They did, and it came out on top. Wow. But the study also highlighted something really fascinating. What's that? It turns out that being super specific really pays off when it comes to AI translation. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Like the more specific the AI is trained to be, the better the translation? Exactly. For example, they found that using generic Spanish data resulted in a much lower accuracy read compared to using data that was specifically tailored to either European Spanish or Latin American Spanish. Thanks. We're talking almost three times more accurate when they got specific. That makes sense. Yeah. Language is all about nuance, right? Exactly. So the more context you can give the AI, mm -hmm. the better it will be at understanding and replicating those nuances. Instead of speaking in generalities, you're teaching it to speak with a specific accent and dialect. You got it. Wow. And that's just one example. Okay. The study also revealed some other really interesting findings, especially when it comes to the impact of this technology on both the quality of the translation and the well-being of the translators themselves. Okay, we're going to have to take a quick break. Sure. But when we come back, I want to dive deeper into those findings. Sounds good. This is just too fascinating to stop now. And we're back. We've been on a roll talking about this whole context sensitivity thing in AI translation. Yeah. And before the break, you were about to drop some serious knowledge bombs about how this tech is impacting the actual translators. I'm dying to know more. Well, you'll be happy to know that this isn't just about making more accurate translation. It's about making life better for the humans doing the translating. Really? The study found that translators who use this context-sensitive approach reported significantly higher levels of job satisfaction and lower levels of stress. No way! They actually measured that! I'm actually surprised they can quantify something like translator happiness. It makes sense when you think about it. Okay. Imagine spending hours, day after day, fixing the same errors made by a machine. Yeah. It would be incredibly demoralizing. Er but with context sensitivity taking care of those lower level tasks, mm -hmm. translators are free to focus on the parts of the job they're passionate about. Right. They get to be more creative, more engaged, actual translators. Exactly. They become wordsmiths, artisans of language. Ooh. Not yeah. just error fixing robots. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so this all sounds amazing, like some utopian vision of the future where AI and humans are living in perfect harmony. Right. But are there any downsides here? Well... Any potential risks we should be aware of? That's a really important question. Yeah. Because, like any new technology, there are always going to be challenges and potential pitfalls. Like what? Give me the worst case scenario. Okay. Are we all going to be speaking in monotone robot voices because the AI has taken over? I can assure you that's not going to happen. Okay, good. But one challenge is ensuring we have enough high quality data to train these AI models. Mm. To really excel, these systems need massive amounts of text that's been carefully annotated and tagged with the right context. So it's like feeding a picky eater. You yeah. can't just throw any old data at these AI models. Okay. It needs to be the good stuff. Precisely. Yeah. Garbage in, garbage out, as they say. Right. But there are some really smart people working on this. Okay. Using techniques like active learning to pinpoint which data points are the most valuable to the AI's learning process. Okay, so data quality is a big one. Yeah. What else? What other challenges are on the horizon for this technology? Well, as much as we love to talk about how amazing AI is, we also have to remember that human language is incredibly complex. 
there are nuances, idioms, cultural references, things that even the most advanced AI systems still struggle to grasp. So are you saying that human translators will always have a place in this brave new world of AI translation? Absolutely. Okay. I believe that AI and human translators can and should coexist and complement each other. AI can handle the technical aspect, the repetitive tasks, yeah. and the sheer volume of translation work. Yeah. While human translators can provide the creativity, the cultural understanding, and the finesse that AI simply can't replicate. This has been an incredible deep dive, and I feel like I've gained a whole new appreciation for the power of language and the potential of AI to enhance, not replace, our human connection. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having me. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the future of AI translation. <laughs>